Welcome to the first ever episode, your post-race winners and losers from the Australian Grand Prix for 2019. This is a new series I'm going to be doing and it's a bit... Um, a concoction, we'll call it. It's a little bit of a focus on the race, but not too, too much, because that's obviously what we cover in our race review. So this is more of a overall weekend, who did great, who didn't do so well. And also, this is going to be the place where we look at the Fantasy League, who's doing well, how awful I am doing. And yes, this week, oh, I have done terrible. So I can't wait to share that with you lot. That'll be nearer the end and it won't be too long but I just thought it'd be a little bit of fun to do a little transfer window at the end of each weekend but the main focus the winners and the losers who shone brightest at the Australian Grand Prix and who really had a race to forget all 20 drivers on the grid had some sort of story to tell whether it be Antonio Giovinazzi causing an absolute trolley train classic Italian drivers that is or Kevin Magnussen being a bit of a boss man and being up there in P6, best of the rest. But plenty of stories up and down the grid. Who was your winners? Who was your losers? Let me know in the description and the comment section below. You can't put in the description, so don't do that. But in the comment section below. So, winners. Who were the biggest winners? Each week as well, I'm going to do two winners. One biggest winner. Two losers. One biggest loser. And our first winner for this week, our first winner ever on this channel, is Lando Norris. Now, I can, I can already hear what you're saying. His on-screen stats aren't great, are they? Finished in 12th, and also they're quite irrelevant, these stats. But these are the sort of format I'm going to use for the rest of the year, when hopefully it'll look a little bit more interesting. But for the reason he's in this week, and I imagine a lot of you will realise why he's in the winner's section this week, all the pressure he had on his shoulders this weekend, he came in, got it into Q3, 8th on the grid, a brilliant job in that McLaren, and yes, he didn't convert it into points, but was really racy, really feisty, making some good moves through that midfield, was unfortunately a casualty of that Giovinazzi train, but for me, coping under that pressure, considering I didn't have so, so high hopes for him, I was really impressed with Norris, he is our first winner for this week, our second winner, just missed out on the biggest winner for our first ever week, is Danny Kvyat. 10th place overall in the race, but started back in 16th place and went for a little bit of a rogue strategy. But why he's on the list of winners for me this week over the likes of Max Verstappen, over the likes of Lance Stroll, is the fact that he was another driver that has so much pressure. This is a guy who's been kicked out of F1 twice, kicked out of Red Bull, made an absolute mockery of, but he's come back and not only to get a point, but to hold off Pierre Gasly, who's in the Red Bull for his first ever race, was, was a mega job from Danny. So he is our second winner in the series, but our first biggest winner. And I can, you, you already know, there's no real point, is it? It is the Viking, Lord Thor, Valtteri Bottas. His first race win of the season, the first race of the season. Those stats look beautiful, don't they? All those first places. But he now leads the driver's standings by eight points. He got the fastest lap as well. But similarly to Norris and Kvyat, the reason this guy is on the list is no one expected him to win. They all expected him to be under Lewis Hamilton's shoe for the entire season. And yet he said, no, you know what? I'm going to smash this championship, which is... What I've been trying to say for a little while, that I really do like Bottas, and I think there was talent there, but over the winter, if, if I ever said that, I was utterly suppressed. And I'm not saying that I expected him to win the first race. I really didn't. And I think that's why he's got to be the biggest winner, because just no one expected it. This guy is in for a championship. But losers, this is the more spicy bit, the more controversial bit. And yes, my first ever loser... Is my favourite driver. Um, don't get me wrong, Roman Grosjean in my eyes will never be a loser. However, this is more focused on the fact that for two years running, his wheels have said bye-bye. Um, departing the car earlier than they should have and not at the right time. Grosjean issuing the pit stops for the second year running in Australia. He was on for a seventh place finish. Sixth in qualifying. Brilliant. Was a winner in qualifying. Overtaken by Magnussen early doors. They went for a bit of a rogue strategy. He would have got caught up in the Giovinazzi train, I believe, or would have been really close to doing that. But his wheels said goodbye, see you later, and decided they were going to jump to Bahrain early doors. 
Grosjean out of the race. And you know what? That really hurt my fantasy team. So Grosjean is our first loser. Our second loser is Pierre Gasly. Again, I, I want to focus that this is an entire weekend sort of analysis, if you will. And I know Gasly, it wasn't his fault. He was out in Q1. The team decided that they were safe. <laughs> they thought, oh yeah, there's no way we're going out in Q1. And Sod's Law decided to smack Red Bull in the face and say, you know what, Gasly, in your first race Red Bull, you're going to start way down the field. And don't get me wrong, it was a good recovery drive from Gasly. And in his first ever race for Red Bull, that's a lot of pressure, a lot of learning to do. But the fact he didn't get any points, the fact he got stuck behind Danny Kvyat, alarm bells a little bit, considering that overtaking is easier this year, but I, I do understand as well that Melbourne is a difficult track to overtake. But our biggest loser, our first ever biggest loser, and it's it's not nice to say, is it? It's it's oh, I wish we could just skip this bit, but we can't. We the show must go on. Daniel Ricciardo um, lost his Red Bull wings at the end of last year. Lost his front wing on the opening lap of this race. 19th overall, he didn't finish last, but he didn't finish. So his best race to finish this season can't be put on the leaderboard, so not applicable I have put there on screen because he hasn't actually finished a race yet. A calamitous start for Ricardo. Question marks on whether it was the right move to go to Renault. Question marks on whether Honda were gonna do well with Red Bull, but Verstappen and Honda got on the podium. Ricardo, like I said, didn't even finish. Q1 as well was fine, but didn't get into Q3. He'll be really disappointed with that. But let me know in the comments below who was your biggest winner, who was your biggest loser. Max Verstappen, someone who I thought about putting on the winner's list. Really solid race for him, getting Honda on the podium. Lance Stroll as well, I thought, had a particular good weekend, went under the radar. But let's move over then to our Fantasy League section. There are the details on screen. The F1 slash E reviews official league and the code is in the description as well and the link. So it's all very straightforward if you want to join. Almost 300 of you. That really surprised me. I was, I thought, oh, maybe we might get about 50 or so. But almost 300 is a brilliant number. So... Let's start off then by looking at the absolute calamity that was my team, the Grosjean Army representing, um, yes, my league rank out of 289 of us, I was 247th. Oh my God, why you guys listen to me ramble on about F1, I, I really don't know. But this was the team and the big issue was that Ricardo DNF'd, Grosjean DNF'd, Giovinazzi went backwards in the race, Ferrari didn't show up, Gasly was out in Q1, so all of my drivers had some sort of issue or craziness going on in this race, so I was, I was a little bit unlucky, I'd like to think, but it's tweaking is going to be needed to be done. You can see there your top seven, a really close top battle with the top three of you leading the way, really, really close, and I'm sure in the next couple of weeks, the gap will eke out a little bit, but I'll let you know now, I'm on 70 points, these guys are almost at 200, so I'm miles away straight away, and so I will throw that out there if it's not too late to join, and I'm considering maybe in a few races time or in the summer break starting a new league, starting from the summer break and going to the end. I'll still keep this one, but just for any late entrance, it's, it's not too late is all I will say, but our leader Eva, this is their score, 196 points, first in our league, and you can see why, a really solid squad there, I'm assuming a Mercedes fan, Hamilton and Bottas with that Mercedes car, the two Torosso boys as well, and Kvyat picking up plenty of points, and then Robert Kubitzer, who... I was considering doing a video about him this week. I've still got a couple that I've got, um, well, have been working on. But he's someone that I was, I don't want to say disappointed with, but I suppose slightly surprised with was Robert after this race. So picking up a few points in Fantasy League is brilliant, but he was quite a way off George Russell, and I'm hoping that'll change for next time. But we've got to prepare the army for the next battle. Bahrain is next time out, and what I've decided to do is to, to spice this up a little bit, because it can get a bit boring. Fantasy League, I get that. I'm not very good at it either. So, you know what we're gonna do, is after every race, you can make one free substitution. You don't have to. I am going to. Every time, I'm gonna make a substitution, and this time, Giovinazzi is out, 
And in comes George Russell. Picked up a fair few points he did in Fantasy League. And my thinking is, if he can stay in the race and stay out of trouble, if anyone DNFs, that's going to be a plus one position. So I've put in George Russell. That could be a silly move. It probably is knowing me. But also, it frees up my budget for the next free transfer. I can afford to get a little bit more of an expensive player. But I'm letting you know now. One driver that's never going to change is Roman Grosjean. The Grosjean army will march on all season long, even if I'm last in the league. It, it's all just a bit of a laugh and a bit of fun. So you can join if you want. The link and the code will be in the description. But that is it, your winners and losers from the Melbourne Grand Prix. Let me know in the comments below who was your biggest winner, your biggest loser. And you can also tell me how bad I am at Fantasy League if you would like. But thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.